Coming up on the Western Sun, actress Marcy Ross explains why everything's coming up roses for her and the rest of the Gypsy cast. Ted Apodaca talks in depth with 1990 baseball MVP Jared Cawhorn. And the film industry is at it again with their annual bombardment of summer movies. The Western Sun, with anchors Carlos Fernandez, Emily Dame, Mike Donegan Commentary, Tom Moeller Sports, and Jennifer Haywood Entertainment. Welcome to the summer edition of The Western Sun, a semester video news project assembled by the editors and staff of The Western Sun newspaper, the student-run publication for Golden West College. Hi, I'm Emily Dame. And I'm Carlos Fernandez. Our top story, both the University of California Board of Regents and the California State University Chancellor's Office have voted to raise the cost of undergraduate tuition. The UC systems have raised their costs 34%, which amounts to $650 more per year. And the Cal State University systems have raised their cost of tuition 20%, which brings the cost to approximately $936 per year. According to UC administrators, the cost of attending a UC campus is still affordable at $150 below the national average of high quality public education. But some point out that with room and board included, a more realistic figure is $2,000 above the national average. Golden West counselor Tom Kasuth said that when a college raises its fees, other institutions, including community colleges, are affected. In a related story, people seeking an education at Golden West College this summer and fall will find their choice of classes a bit more limited. According to Dean of Instruction Sheila Brazier, the number of classes offered this summer will be reduced by at least 25 percent, while the fall semester classes will be reduced by about 10 percent. Brazier said the reason for the reductions is that over the past year or so, enrollment at the college has increased by 6 percent, while California's legislature has provided funds for only 1 percent growth. She said the class reductions will continue for the foreseeable future. The Western Sun recently went out and asked students on campus how they felt about recent CSU fee increases and how they will affect Golden West College. I'm going to UCLA in the fall, um, 1991, and, and there's been a 40% increase. And I feel, you know, I'm going to go either way, but this is certainly um, put a crimp in my budget. Well, basically, what I feel that um, it really hinders our education, the fact that um, Pete Wilson has apted to increase the educational fund. I know that in the in universities, it's up to 40% than it was last semester. And the sad thing is, is that they're not allotting for more classes or easy, easier availability. And they are giving us an increase in the rate, and I think that's going to hinder the um, amount of attendance, the amount of the quality of education. Um, I know personally I'm taking several units at this college. The sciences are incredibly lacking in funds and equipment um, and in staff, and it's just totally affecting the students' learning ability, and it's only going to get worse. And I was really upset to hear that they were increasing, especially with the lotto, all the money that was supposed to go from lotto to schools, and then the state cuts back on the money to education. So the lotto is really not doing anything but um, putting in the money that the state took away. So I, I think California needs to really reevaluate their education. Basically, it's um, it's a big problem for me because I'm a foreign student and I have already paid a lot of fees. So the increase ha is really going to cut me down in so much of my expenses, and I can't do what I mean. Suppose I want to transfer; it's going to be more expensive for me. So I would prefer if it stayed down as low as possible, and they not increase it, so that you know our opportunities become less. How are we supposed to get ahead in life when we can't even pay for our education? Is really ridiculous. You know, I think it really stinks and. Um, it just, I feel really bad, you know, here I am trying to get an education and what does uh, Pete Wilson do? Raise the heights. Yeah, I think it's real important to keep the fees as low as possible and um, hopefully cut other places. Coming up next, I'll be talking to Marcy Ross, the star of Golden West College's version of the Broadway play Gypsy. She was a, a woman for her time who was on her own. Thinking about UC or Cal State? I'm Georgina Dodge, English major at UCI. The small classes and excellent faculty at Golden West College prepared me for transfer to UCI. 
Golden West College, located off the 405 freeway in Huntington Beach, is convenient and affordable. Call Golden West College at 714-895-8306. Think about it. I spoke with Marcy Ross earlier and found that as she strengthens her resume, she's taking on newer, more challenging roles in otherwise familiar plays. Everything's Coming Up Roses for actress Marcy Ross, who portrays the bold stage mother of Gypsy Rose Lee and June Havoc in the current Golden West College version of the Broadway musical hit Gypsy. First. Uh, Gypsy is one of the best roles uh, written for a woman and it's rare in a musical that you get both a good book and a good score and this one is I think an exception to that. The character of the mother, the mother was indeed a character, <laughs> that's exactly what she was. She, uh, she was a, a woman uh, for her time who uh, was on her own. She was a single mother having been married three times um, and she was doing the best she could. Because the play goes through Gypsy's young life, children make up a big portion of the cast. The children in the show are integral to the show. We have to see the, the progression from young June and young Louise to older June and older Louise. Um, the kids in our show are all pros. I mean, these kids probably all together have more experience than I have. I think they're going to be wonderful and they really make a, a very important contribution to the show. Marcy Ross herself has had quite a bit of experience playing leads in a number of musicals. I have done uh, lots of musicals. <laughs> I've done Funny Girl, uh, the part of Fanny, four times. Uh, the last time I did it was here. In fact, it was my first show in California or Orange County, for that matter. Um, I've done Sound of Music, the role of Maria. I played Peter in Peter Pan. Um, I've done I Do, I Do, Hello, Dolly. 110 in the Shade, uh, quite a few musicals. But there are some things Ross won't do. So, um, I don't do Shakespeare, I'll say that. Not because I can't, it's just not something I ever was in love doing. Had to study it in school, which was fun. And everybody should study it, I guess. Um, Ross first began her acting career with stage roles in high school. Um, I was very shy as a child. I think in some ways I'm still a little bit shy um, and there was an audition for a play uh, called Come Back Little Sheba and um, I have my father to thank for this he literally dragged me to this audition because <laughs> I think he wanted me to have the experience of trying out and I did and I got a role of and course with any musical or play actually, there are many challenges the actors must go through um, I, the, the hardest part I think uh, of course, learning the lines um, and establishing a character and sticking with it, maintaining consistency. Um, I would imagine that most actors will tell you that the hardest part is to keep it fresh when you're doing it more than two or three times. Um, but that for me is, is a challenge and I always look at it that, that every audience deserves, they're seeing it for the first time and every audience deserves to see the best that I can do on any given night or afternoon. And that for me is the challenge to keep it fresh for them as well as for me and the other people that I'm working with. Gypsy is currently playing at the Main Stage Theater on the Golden West College campus. Gypsy will be showing at 8 p.m. on selected dates from May 11th to the 25th. Sunday matinees will be shown at 3 p.m. on May 12th and May 19th. For exact dates, call the College Bookstore ticket office. The stately sounds of pomp and circumstance will be heard May 30th on the Golden West College campus. The college will be holding its 25th annual graduation ceremonies in the quad beginning at 6 p.m. Dr. Jack A. Scott, president of the Pasadena Area Community College District, will be the keynote speaker. His topic, Common Myths About Success. An estimated 575 candidates for Associate of Arts degree will be el eligible to receive diplomas along with about 200 students earning certificates in vocational areas such as cosmetology and auto technology. The college also will honor the community's outstanding citizen and the R. Dudley Boyce Award will be given to an outstanding student. 
Now commentator Mike Donegan has a few words to say concerning Kurds, dollars, and education. Who are the Kurds and why should the American people care? The American government seems bent on the belief that it is the welfare check writer to the world. Well, with the recent crisis in education, class closure, underpaid and understaffed teachers, and schools in decay, America should stop spending billions of dollars on someone else's children and start spending money on her own. According to the LA Times, our education system in America is ranked the poorest among the top 10 industrialized nations. America continues to pour millions into the protection of countries both east and west from the now defunct myth of communism. It's time to stop spending money on other countries' education system and time to start putting some attention towards America's future, her children. Would it be nice if the army had to have a bake sale to buy their next M1 tank instead of schools having to hold a bake sale to buy books? Thank you. Thanks, Mike. Coming up next is an inside look at the benefits and opportunities of Golden West College's music department. And the kinds of things that we have done have attracted students from all over the state, from now all over the country, and we've even had students from England and Canada who have heard about this program and have come here specifically to be in the program. Thinking about the time of your life? Hi, I'm Ed Morton. After retirement, I enrolled in the diesel technology program at Golden West in order to gain skills so that I could work on my boat while we're out fishing. Why don't you explore new areas? The arts, computers, aerobics. Golden West College, located off the 405 freeway in Huntington Beach, is convenient and affordable. Call Golden West College at 714-895-8306. Think about it. Don Ventura recently went to the Golden West College Recording Studio to find out exactly how innovative the program actually is. By the looks of things, you might not expect Golden West College to be a campus where students from other countries would flock to. However, in the case of the College Recording Arts program, students are doing just that. And the kinds of things that we have done have attracted students from all over the state, from now all over the country, and we've even had students from England and Canada who have heard about this program and have come here specifically to be in the program. But what is it that makes the recording classes here on campus better than the recording classes given on other campuses around the state, or even the country for that matter? Our vocational education program in recording engineering runs two years and that gives us enough time to really have the students get the hands-on experience they need. Just sitting in a classroom and listening to a lecture is never going to train someone to be an engineer. That helps, but they've got to get out there and touch the equipment and use it and learn to be involved in productions and that is a valuable asset and a lot of other programs just don't give uh, the kind of time it takes. Williams makes sure that these students are getting as prepared as they possibly can for what lies ahead in the world of record engineering by having the students put together an actual album. Well, I've been teaching now for 15 years, and each year we put out an album project that represents the best work from our student songwriters and producers and engineers, and it's a collective effort that involves just about every student in the engineering program. The value for the student is that they <clears throat> take away uh, a product of their efforts which will be tangible. Check this right. out. You know, years after they were in this program, they can say, this is what I did at Golden West College. And, uh, it, you know, for a songwriter, it's not just a cassette. It's the real thing. And for the producer, it's got their name on it. And if they're ever interviewed for a position, and, uh, an employer is always going to ask, well, tell me about your experience. And at that point, our student can come out and say, experience? I've got it. We've not only worked a lot in the studio, but we've seen our work go all the way to a final product. Of course, the hands-on experience is beneficial for the students, but the recording studio comes with something that universities and private institutions can't offer, low prices. The studios are entirely free. The only pay or the only charges have to do with parking, uh, the normal parking fees, and uh, any tapes that the students actually take away with them. They have to provide those tapes. Uh, there are a lot of other programs out there right now, some at private schools, some at universities. Most of them are very expensive uh, in terms of a per semester basis. 
Uh, plus, most of the schools have not been around for uh, in a very long in terms of the, our program, and they don't have very many people out there in the field working. Uh, so we're, we have, uh, have built up a long uh, record uh, uh, of turning out good quality students. Golden West College offers state-of-the-art recording studios which are constantly being improved upon, something that most community college campuses don't have the ability to do. In terms of other schools, we have uh, more studios and better quality studios in terms of equipment uh, than virtually any other school on the West Coast. Uh, the only schools that would be at all better would be schools that are uh, private schools that are using regular professional recording studios. This is Don Ventura reporting from the music department for the Western Sun. There was a 35% decrease in the number of auto thefts this spring at Golden West College as compared to spring 1990 with only six cars stolen in all of 1991, according to security officer Floyd Robison. This was in marked contrast to the 15% overall increase in campus crime in 1991 as compared to the same time last year. Robison said that this is also at odds with the general trend in Orange County cities where the number of auto thefts is generally higher this year as compared to this time last year. The number of auto and bicycle thefts were up slightly at the college while security officers handed out somewhat more citations this spring than last. Summer is here, and once again, summer school classes are being offered at Golden West College. Appointments are available for registration May 28th to May 30th. The summer enrollment fee is $5 per unit with a $50 maximum. Two sessions are being offered with the first 10-week session beginning June 3rd. For more information, call the Admissions and Records Office at 714-895-8306. Coming up, Ted Apodaca talks with 1990 baseball MVP Jared Cahorn about the past, present, and future. I was trying to really focus on having a, two good years here at Golden West so I get myself a scholarship and go play for a, a four-year Division I baseball team. Thinking about getting the edge on that job? Hi, I'm John Blake, Vice President with Prudential Base Securities in Long Beach. The business and management courses I took at Golden West College provided me a solid base for my career. Golden West College, located off the 405 freeway in Huntington Beach, is convenient and affordable. Call Golden West College at 714-895-8306. Think about it. Skating is a popular summer activity, but don't take your rollerblades or skateboard to downtown Huntington Beach. The City Council, back on April 15th, passed an emergency ordinance banning skating from business districts throughout the city. The new law was instigated in part by Main Street merchants who complained that the speeding skaters, especially boarders, were noisy and a danger to pedestrians. The new law also gives police the power to issue tickets without a complaint from a citizen to those seen skating unsafely. Now let's go to the Western Sun's own Tom Moeller for a look at sports on campus. Thanks, Carlos. The 1990-91 sports season here at Golden West College was a very successful one, with the wrestlers taking home three state titles. Starting off, the men's water polo team captured its second straight championship and ninth overall, posting a 29-4 record on its way to defending the state crown. Goalie Scott Taylor was named the state tournament MVP. The women's volleyball team also captured the state title, their second in three years and fourth overall. Albert Gasparian, in coaching the team to a 25-3 overall record, and a perfect 12-0 conference record was named the Orange Empire Conference State and National Coach of the Year. Julie Eberhardt, a sophomore outside hitter, was named the state tournament MVP. In women's basketball, Golden West successfully defended its state title by defeating LA Valley College 77-75 to become the first team to win back-to-back -back state championships since the inception of the state tournament. Point guard Elizabeth Sersha was named tournament and Orange Empire Conference MVP. The men's swim team came close to defending its state title as they captured second place at the state meet. Mark Rinsler was the top Golden West swimmer as he personally scored 47 points and captured two fourth place finishes and a second place. In women's swimming, Lisa Hadfield, national record holder in the 50-yard butterfly, led the women's team to an impressive second place finish at the state championship meet. She won three events and led a relay to first place finish, the first time a Golden West women's relay has won at the state meet. In football, 
The team started out strong, going 5-1, five only to end up at 5-5. Five five. Ray Smith was voted Central Division Defensive Player of the Year and All-Orange County. Team Captain Kevin Ashworth was also All-Orange County and First Team All-American. In women's soccer, the team finished with a record of eight wins, eight losses, and two ties as team captains Trisha Wood and Leanna Jay made first team all Orange Empire Conference. Men's soccer finished at 8, 9, and 4 with freshman forward Jed Smith making first team all Orange Empire Conference. Both teams narrowly missed the playoffs. Recently, our Ted Apodaca got a chance to speak with Jared Cawhorn, the 1990 MVP of the Orange Empire Conference. Here's what Jared had to say. I recently caught up with Jared Cawhorn before a game and was able to ask the 1990 Orange Empire Conference Baseball MVP some questions about his career, his outstanding season, and what the future holds. Played uh, four years at Huntington Beach High School on the baseball team, two years of varsity baseball, and I was uh, MVP of my team, and then I got recruited here to uh, Golden West Junior College by Burt. And uh, my freshman year, I was voted MVP of the conference. And then uh, I got voted on to go to a Taiwan team, to go to Taiwan. And we played uh, Russia. We played all the, the foreign teams. It was a great experience. We came in fourth. We almost won the bronze medal, but we didn't win. But it was a good experience playing against the Russians. And uh, I really enjoyed that. Last year, you were voted Orange Empire Conference MVP. Uh, tell me what that was like. When I was uh, voted MVP of the conference last year, you know, I was happy. You know, I, I, was, I was thankful that, you know, the other players around the conference were telling me congratulations. I was happy for that, that they recognized that I had a pretty good year. But uh, really, I was happy, but I really didn't want to get it interfered with this year. I was trying to f really focus on having a, two good years here at Golden West so I get myself a scholarship and go play for a, a four-year Division I baseball team. So do you feel any pressure on yourself to try and repeat that? Well, I knew that, you know, you have to have a lot of luck to win MVP. You know, the ball bounced my way last year. Our team had a great year, so I was just voted. Really, going back to back was out of the question when I started this year. I just wanted to have, a, you know, have good numbers hitting and good numbers fielding and just having, you know, a good year. We also caught up with Jared's father and asked if he was a major influence in Jared's career. Well, I won't really say I'm a big influence. Uh, I've been a baseball fan and a player for most of my life, and it just kind of fit right in for, uh, for the whole family, including the sisters. Finally, I asked Jared what's next in his career. After this year, I'm probably going to go to UC Irvine. I signed the letter of intent with them, so I'll be attending University of Irvine. And during the summer, I'm going to go play in Cape Cod, a wooden baseball bat league. For Jared Cahorn, I'm Ted Apodaca from Rustler Field for the Western Sun. Cawhorn finished his career at Golden West with a 348 batting average, seven home runs, 109 hits, and 64 runs batted in. That's it for sports. Thanks, Tom. Well, the summer movies are upon us, and coming up, we'll see what's new and exciting in film. Thinking about returning to college? I'm Lisa Newhart, nursing student. As a single mom and returning student, I chose Golden West College to meet my career goals. Golden West College offers training in more than 60 cutting-edge careers. Golden West College, located off the 405 freeway in Huntington Beach, is convenient and affordable. Call Golden West College at 714-895-8306. Think about it. Jennifer Haywood is here to tell us what's up this summer in music, video, and film. Thanks, Emily. This summer promises to be one of the most lively summers in years. The concert scene kicks off as soon as Morrissey rolls into town. He's playing at the Amphitheater on June 1st and at the Great Western Forum on June 2nd while promoting his new CD, Kill Uncle. The immortal Grateful Dead will appear on June 1st at the Coliseum in Los Angeles. And finally, ACDC is rocking their way to Irvine Meadows on June 8th. If live isn't your kick, try new releases by artists Paula Abdul and Elvis Costello, making their return to the recording scene with new albums due out May 14th. The Eurythmics unleash your greatest hits compilation on the same day. And due to a resurgence on popularity, the Doors will open the Doors in concert on May 21st. Also, Guns N' Roses will release a new album, which according to Axl Rose, will bury the style of their earlier album Appetite for Destruction. This summer's video counters will fill themselves with several of Christmas's best. Titles such as the Oscar nominated movies The Grifters, Postcards from the Edge, Green Card, and Goodfellows. 
will be available in June. Such hits as Rob Reiner's ankle-crushing Misery and Arnold Schwarzenegger's heartwarming comedy Kindergarten Cop will also be released next month. Now that we're on the heels of summer, we can look forward to more than a handful of blockbusters put out by the likes of Touchstone, Universal, and Paramount. Director Ron Howard proves his expertise in Backdraft, a drama said to be the first accurate account of the trials and tribulations of firefighters and their families. Boasting the acting talents of Robert De Niro, Kurt Russell, Donald Sutherland, William Baldwin, and Jennifer Jason Leigh. Opening May 24th. Now for more on summer movies, let's go to Jim Thornton. Thanks, Jen. The summer movie explosion is here again. Ever since 1989's memorable confrontation of such films as Batman, Indiana Jones and the Lost Crusade, and Ghostbusters 2, this time of year has become the arena in which the movie studios send out their best, or at least best looking, to fight it out on the big screens of America. This year, the setting's the same, but the contenders are different, as movie studios race to put their hopefuls on the summer schedule. So who are the heavyweights? First up, FX2. The eagerly awaited Terminator 2. Terminator 2. The all-star, perhaps unbeatable Robin Hood. Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves. The rocket-powered Rocketeer. And a few other possibilities. Don't tell mom the babysitter's dead. Now let's take a look at what's coming soon to a theater near you. The summer movie schedule started off with a bang with FX2, The Deadly Art of Illusion. This surprise sequel brings back Brian Brown and Brian Dennehy as the special effects wizard and ex-cop that are forced to team up together again as they are drawn into a web of danger. But whether FX2 has what it takes to survive against the tough competition is yet to be seen. Comedies are still popular and often surprise the industry with runaway success. What About Bob is a potential winner with the star power of Richard Dreyfuss and Bill Murray in a story about a mental patient who follows his psychiatrist on vacation. Christina Applegate crawls out of her television role on Married with Children and into the unlikely comedy Don't Tell Mom the Babysitter's Dead about Applegate being left in charge of her siblings for the summer when the horrible babysitter unexpectedly dies. One of the giants of the season is undoubtedly Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves, set for release June 21st. The film promises to be the swashbuckling epic of the summer, redefining the Robin Hood legend. Leading roles go to Kevin Costner, Morgan Freeman, Alan Rickman, Christian Slater, and Mary Elizabeth Mastrantonio. Disney Studios is planning to release a giant of its own on the same day. The Rocketeer, this year's comic book entry, is relatively unknown to the general public. Set in 1938, the action-filled movie is about a pilot who finds an experimental rocket pack that allows him to fly. The hero is played by newcomer Bill Campbell, with other starring roles going to Jennifer Connelly, Ellen Arkin, and Timothy Dalton. And Disney is also set to re-release their animated classic 101 Dalmatians. It should do well with the younger crowd, and would be well worth seeing on a big screen by people of all ages. And a long-awaited sequel is finally here. Set ten years after the original film, Terminator 2 brings back stars Arnold Schwarzenegger and Linda Hamilton in a story about two Terminator robots sent from the future, one programmed to kill Sarah Connor's son, John, the other to protect him. But regardless of who comes out on top, this summer should prove to be a knockout. This is Jim Thornton reporting for the Western Sun. Hasta la vista, baby. The members of Golden West College's Interclub Council and members of next year's Student Council are taking steps to change the college's mascot. The current mascot, a character from the comic strip Tumbleweeds, has served as GWC's mascot for the last 25 years. But according to Interclub Council, this mascot is highly disliked and at worst not recognized by GWC students. So far, there have only been a few alternatives suggested for the current logo. Among them are the GWC Orcas, the Waves, the Dolphins, the Ducks, and the Sharks. Thanks for joining us. Tune in again for the next edition of The Western Sun.